They're still running. Perry, how's it going? I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> He's having doing an interview. Uh huh. They're underpaid and overworked. They're not doing anything. Everybody else, so two thousand, some two thousand three hundred other cases, they coerced guilty pleas out of people. Uh, they they do that because by starting out multiplying the charges, like they did with us. <coughs> I don't know if you were there when the prosecutor said they treat, they're treating you just like these defendants aren't being treated any differently than any other defendants in Montgomery County. And I jumped up and said, that's the first true thing I've heard this prosecutor say. They multiply the charges against every defendant so as to naturally frighten a person and intimidate them and coerce a guilty plea uh, on a plea bargain. How many charges did you have at the beginning? Of 13, 13, sure. It, uh, it's a complete violation of, of their oath of office, of their uh, legis the function established by the legislature. It's double jeopardy. It violates the law of merger, requiring merger. It uh, violates the, professional, the Pennsylvania Code of Professional Responsibility. It's, a, it's an outrage, and these judges just endorse it because they're former prosecutors, and they think like prosecutors, and they want guilty pleas. It's, uh, it's the tightest, most corrupt rottenest system that I've uh, come across, and it's, uh, it means that the Bill of Rights is dead in Montgomery County. And the only time you'll find out whether there is a, any constitutional rights is when you go into that court, you know, when you're a defendant. And uh, when you go in, you find out it's dead. Uh, if, if you're taking back to the courtroom, would you take the stand at all uh, after what happened yesterday? Uh... <coughs> Well, we'll just have to see what happens, and, uh, you know, we're here, and we're not in court, and uh, we... Well, when, when would you go back if, there was, if they didn't take you back? Well, did you go back court. at all? Oh, I... We came here yesterday when we were... Uh, as a protest to the suppression of the truth in that courtroom. See, I, I don't think people understand. I don't know... Do you understand what's going on in this building, or what's, what's being done here? I mean, really, at a... You see, the press always talks about nose cones, you know, and I'm not sure. No, 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 they made motions in the trial. What, what people think this is, you know, what, whether they really know what this is here. This, this is the bomb. Everything except the thermonuclear component. It's the arming, it's the fusing, it's the casing. This is the bomb. Uh, I think people are even sterilizing their own mind by saying it's a missile component. If, if those things, those uh, two Mark 12 A's that are on, in, the, in the courthouse had fins on them, you know, people could understand, oh, well, that's a bomb. Mm -hmm. But because the technology is such, uh, so unfamiliar and so extraordinarily developed and sophisticated, I, I still think that many people don't understand that those are two thermonuclear warheads. They, every time I say warhead, people object, uh, you know, sitting there. Of course, the thermonuclear device isn't, you know, in it. And, you know, that's, uh, but is a bomb less a bomb because they haven't yet put the TNT in it? It's, uh, you're going to find another name for it because it, it doesn't. They haven't yet put the TNT in. And uh, this is what the public should be looking at. This is what should be on trial. This this is the crime against humanity. This is the trespass and the burglary, and the. Uh, criminal conduct in Montgomery County. What the judge is saying is it's impossible for any crimes against humanity be taken to take place in this county, which means it's impossible to take place anywhere in, in this country, which means that without listening to any witnesses or any of the evidence or any of the testimony or without understanding himself what's going on here, he's making a, a judgment that's, that endorses Anything the Pentagon does, anything, he doesn't care. Anything they do is okay with him. If this were Auschwitz, he would endorse it. It happens to be a hundred, you know, thousands of times over Auschwitz. 
and he endorses it. Gas ovens are primitive compared to the nuclear incineration that's being prepared here. Such disrespect for the court and for the judge. Carried walk, yeah. Well, no one got carried. I got. I was. You said you were a public defender at one time. Public defender, Wyndham County, Vermont. Wyndham, W-I-N-D-H-A-M. Seventy to seventy-five. Right. Yeah, I guess. You're here, or the I guess you're aware that Judge Sound was I did. We asked him to step down because I had exposed uh, his office so much. He violates every national standard. Standards have been set by the National Legal Aid and Defenders Association, by the American Bar Association, and in 1978 by a special advisory commission. And uh, every single standard is violated by his office that he ran. Uh, you know, just just as a starter, operating out of the courthouse in tandem with the prosecution. It doesn't have the, appear the appearance or the substance of uh, independent <laughs> representation of the indigent defendant. And of course, the majority of defendants are indigent. They wouldn't be stealing if they were rich. <laughs> and they're not stealing in the first place. They're only taking what's theirs and what's been stolen from them. <laughs> I think, uh, incidentally, Leonard Leonard Carp did an excellent, excellent <laughs> yeah, I don't know. job of I'm thinking about it, you, know. you know interviewing the attorneys in this county. There's no, it's no secret that this is a racist uh, system, that it's an oppressive system. Uh, I went in, I went in, you know, once last year and just asked a few attorneys just to get a sense of the courthouse. And I said uh, a few questions. Their first question was, to me was, uh, well, we're sorry we have to ask this, but what color is your client? You know, uh, racism is recognized and acknowledged, uh, but you mention it and everybody gets, <laughs> you know, totally defensive. Can we interrupt you a moment? Yeah. Sorry. If the cops come out here, I think we ought to instruct our people not to resist them, you know, sure. because we've got some real resistors here, and, you know, I think time and knots if they wanted to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. We'll get the word around. Sure. Why don't you spread it down there sure. at, at the end? Huh? Sure. <coughs> sure. Sure. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, we're just... Uh, uh, Don is with uh, today's post, uh, which Leonard Carp works for. That, How you doing, that, Don? That did that great rundown on the Montgomery County judges, ah. the judicial system, and the, you know, Cirillo's comment that, uh, show me a good politician, I'll show you a good judge. The people don't want Miranda, you know, which is saying <laughs> that people don't want the Supreme Court, that people don't want the Bill of Rights. Uh, he doesn't want, as a judge, he wants to be a superior court judge now. You know, right. running on a platform that is, a, that is an anti- uh, Bill of Rights platform. It's uh, it's just it's just shameless. Yeah, shameless. we've we've come to uh, we've come to a certain appreciation of uh, of this truth that the rich and the powerful make the law, and then the rich and the powerful are the first to break their own law. And we've had perfect examples of that in Montgomery County and in the courtroom the last nine days. Hi, Art. If their law, if the law that they have put on the books and that they have um, promoted for the benefit of the privileged, if that law suddenly, in a new instance, doesn't suit their interests, then they very callously and unscrupulously break it. Meanwhile, the people uh, <laughs> believe in the same law and seek redress under it and, uh, of course, very rarely get it. Their law is a pretense, this is, which is so proven in our case. We have a, we have a defense and it's denied, you know, denied, because it doesn't suit their, their interest. <laughs> the, uh, Robert Aldridge, uh, I would have thought that, you know, despite the fact that he couldn't testify on, on the effects and whatnot of those weapons, uh, 
that he mm. could have testified to, uh, some mm. to some degree on on the damage that you did there. So, because that twenty seven thousand dollar figure has gone uncontested so sure. far. Sure, there were many things that he could testify. And, and did, did you present that? Or, I mean, I I wasn't there at the time that he that he denied you uh, denied those witnesses. But uh, I would think that'd be something that he. Yeah, he, every decision of, that he, 